Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Former police officer among elderly couple killed in Yara St. Thomas. Police are investigating the murders of an elderly husband and wife at their home in Newland District, Yala St. Thomas, yesterday. Dead are 71-year-old Valen Stratton and 70-year-old Elizabeth Stratton. Reports from the Marins Bay Police are that about 7.55 p.m., citizens heard explosions and summoned them. Upon their arrival, the body of Mr. and Mrs. Stratton were seen lying in the yard with gunshot wounds to the upper body. Commander for the Police Era 5, Assistant Commissioner Gary Griffiths, said the deceased was a former police officer. Uh, last night, sometime after 8, police were informed that um, gunshots were heard in the Newlands area of Yala. On arrival of the police, they saw two elderly persons, male, female. Male is Valen, female is um, Elizabeth, strong, husband and wife. So they were found with gunshot wounds because um, it's been casing their phone on the scene. Police looking on particular theory as it relates to these investigation, as you all well understand, is early in its in the process. So we don't know much yet. We are canvassing the area. Suffice to say that the, the deceased, the male, was a former police. I think with that um, is a likelihood of getting additional information. Residents of Toys Meadows protest police fatal shooting. Residents have brought the main road in the vicinity of Toys Meadows in St. Catherine to protest the fatal shooting of a man by the police last evening. The dead man is being identified as Donald Brown. It's reported that the police went to a bar in Elderside Gardens and attempted to arrest Brown when the incident occurred. Police are reported in the area investigating the abduction of a businessman from Brunswick Avenue about 9 o'clock Thursday night. A one million ransom was demanded. Two men were arrested in connection with the abduction, and the businessman safely returned to his family. A subsequent police operation was conducted in the area in search of more suspects when the police accosted Brown and the fatal shooting occurred. Residents say the shooting was unjustified. It's like a ghetto people. We not have no bucketive. We not have nobody. We not pay tax. A police alone, a lawyer, and certain people alone pay tax. So we not recognize. We need justice. One man demanded. He claimed that the police were still firing shots at residents after the fatal shooting. A police operation is underway in the area. Tourism stalwart Robert Hendricks has passed away. Hendricks, owner of Caribbean World, passed away at his home in St. James. He was 75. Mr. Hendricks was ailing for a few months. Hendricks was credited with introducing tour guides on these buses in Jamaica. In 2020, he was recognized with the Spirit of Independence Award by the St. James Municipal Corporation for its outstanding contribution to the tourism sector. Police say 800 murders linked to Kangsman Gang since 2014. At least 800 murders have been linked to the Kangsman Gang since 2014. That's according to the head of the crime portfolio, Deputy Commissioner of Police, Fitz Bailey. He was updating the nation Thursday on a major ongoing anti-gang operation by the counter-terrorism and organized crime brand CTOC. Police have been investigating the activities of the gang in the past nine months. DCP Bill reiterated the call for gang members to refrain from a life of crime as the security forces will not relent in bringing them to justice. He warned that more initiatives to capture criminals will be implemented in the new year. Note our investigation has linked the clan's gang to at least 800 murders since 2014. In 2018, Gangs accounted for 80% of the murders committed within our country. This year, it accounted for 67% of the murder recorded. It is evident that our anti-gang strategy is working. And I believe that we will continue this effort. And step by step, we will ensure that Jamaica is safer as we bring it to the gangs. And I again want to appeal to those who are engaged in gang activity. You need to step back a little and think of the danger that you are causing to a nation. The law enforcement agencies, the police, the JDF, and all other law enforcement agencies 
we are committed to the cause of making Jamaica safe. And we will do everything in our powers. Next year, 2024, will be a different year for us. We will be stepping up our activities against gang. We'll be going after them wherever they are. It doesn't matter where they hide, we are going to find them. So I appeal to them again to step back and rethink their actions. Residents want Bugwork Gorge to be transformed into a tourist attraction. Discussions are on the way to determine if the Bugwork Gorge in St. Catherine can be transformed into a tourist attraction. Speaking to reporters, President of Advocates Group, Friends of Rare Cobre, Keston Art Garden, says a proposal was made to the Tourism Production Development Committee, TPDCO, to have the area developed for rafting activities. Mr. Garden explained that following an examination of the proposition, TPDCO suggested several recommendations which must be implemented before the Bagwell Arch can be considered for tourism. He says efforts are being made to implement the recommendations. Mr. Garden notes, however, that all spills and other population incidents which have been plaguing the recovery over the years must stop if the move to develop the garage into a tourism production is to be materialized. Well, the process has started with, with the Friends of the Recovery submitting a proposal to TPDCO seeking their, their cooperation in um, setting up a rafting an attraction company for the Bagua Gorge. They have responded, they came and they look at the location and they have made some specific recommendations as to its implementation. So therefore, we are putting their recommendations into our proposal for submission and then we will be having a sit-down meeting to go through the proposal with them to meet their approval. It can, and that's why we have to get to the root of the question of pollution in the, in the Bagua Gorge. It has to stop. We, we could not... Um, develop a product with this level of frequent contamination of the of the Bagua Gorge. So the, the, the oil spill would have been a deterrent. Yes, it is. Police warn against gun salutes during a new year. The Jamaica Constable Force JCF is appealing to license firearm holders to desist from the illegal and dangerous practice of gun salute during in the new year. Under Section 51.2 of the Firearms Prohibition Restriction and Regulations Act 2022, the penalty for engaging in gun salute is a fine of up to $3 million or imprisonment of up to three years. Head of the JCF Corporate Communications Unit, Senior Superintendent of Police, SSP Stephanie Lindsay, told reporters recently that in addition to being a criminal offense to discharge a weapon within 40 yards of a gathering and a public thoroughfare, the act could cost people their lives. In the midst of alcohol consumption and irresponsible behavior, people lose their life because of an act that should never happen. So we're putting it out there very early. If you think of doing that, think twice, not just from a standpoint that you could be arrested, but from the standpoint that you could be charged for murder, she said. SSP Lindsay further urged for arm holders to be responsible in the handling, storage, and use of their weapons when attending social events or New Year's Eve celebrations this weekend. She said the JCF had noted instances in which firearm holders inappropriately stored their weapons in their vehicles when attending weapon-free events. I want to say to persons to desist from doing that. Do not leave your firearms in your vehicles. There are some event promoters who will arrange with security companies to safeguard these weapons, but make prior arrangements. Leave your weapons at home in your safe it is better to do that, she urged. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell.